everyone, I'm Roxanne and I'm a first year medical student at the University of Leicester. Uh, this video is just me talking about the process of getting into the University of Leicester in particular. Um, so to begin with, in terms of the application process, uh, you need all of, of course, like all the general requirements in terms of a good personal statement, a decent-ish UCAT score, but quite good use at UCAT score, <clears throat> and um, work experience, and then you've got your multiple mini interviews, which is what pretty much every medical school does now. In terms of Leicester specifically, um, when it comes to your application, one thing you definitely do need, just like a lot of other medical schools, you need predicted grades of AAA. Now, if you've not got AAA or you've got A star AB, then I don't think you need to worry because Leicester are actually very good at considering alternatives like A star AB. And if you've got something like A star A star B, then you're definitely going to get considered because that's actually even more in terms of equivalence. That's actually more than three A's. So what you're aiming for is a trio of predicted grades that are pretty much equivalent to AAA. Um, so yeah, that come, that's when I'm talking about uh, your application and you send it off to UCAS and everything like that. Now, when it comes to UCAT score, of course, aim as high as you can because there's no harm in that and you've got much more of a better chance of getting yourself an interview. Now, the way that Leicester does it is they actually have a scoring system when it comes to allocating interviews. The way that that works is every candidate gets a score out of 64 um, at my time, I think you had to get at least 55 to be considered uh, for a chance at interview. And um, now it's actually gone up and I believe it's 57 now. It might even be even higher next year. The reason being COVID-19 is just, you know, it caused a big mix up with grades, caused more competition, more people want to go into medicine, competition rates have just rise incredibly and i'm sure you guys have seen that all of the news and so yeah so it's much more competitive now um but it's not to worry if you've got the way that the score works is if you've got good gcse grades that'll really help 50 percent of that score is made up um by your ucat now the ucat is basically split up into deciles depending on scores and each decile is given like a certain number of points so if you get into like a specific decile you'll get the corresponding amount of points and you probably get maybe like 20 30 something like that um it is like a good good amount of points then the other half of the points is given to you based on your academic profile so meaning your gcse's and your predicted grades now if you've got really good gcse's then that's going to help especially if your ucat didn't go so well so i would say if you want to apply to medicine you need to be working very hard right from the get-go all the way from year 10 because your gcse's definitely do matter and this is not only in the case of the University of Leicester, it's pretty much every medical school. GCSEs do matter when it comes to medicine and also dentistry. Uh, so yeah, so you're given a score out of 64. You want to aim as high as you can, of course. So basically aim high for your UCAT. Aim to do well in your GCSEs as well. And that way you can ensure that you get a, as high a score as possible. And so after that, what happens is... Um, all those scores are ranked up and the ones who have ranked the highest are usually allocated interviews and the amount of people that allocated interviews is still quite a high number it's at least a thousand people um because afterwards they make 800 offers roughly approximately 800 offers and i think there's about roughly 300 ish places um so yeah it's a lot of offers that are made um but of course the number of people who actually apply is is actually crazy because in terms of getting into medical school and this is not just Leicester I think it's probably one to ten for each medical school place right I'm talking about like right from the beginning in terms of application like from step one so anyway then when it comes to actual interviews um Leicester does multiple mini interviews just like uh, most of the medical schools now um I don't think there's a lot that don't do um multiple mini interviews in 2021 now um, so the way it works is you've got all the different stations. Leicester had, I think, eight or nine when I did it. And this was 2020 that I did it. Um, yeah, so they had about eight or nine stations from my memory. And they've got all the generic ones, the same ones that all the other medical schools do. You know, one about uh, medical ethics, one about hot topics, one about 
teamwork, one about communication skills, one about problem solving. And they do also have a few that are a bit more specific to them. Um, they've got a few more acting stations than you all the medical schools usually do have because I had three acting stations. And they also have one about NHS values and that's actually where I went wrong. So I'm just letting you guys know so you don't make the same mistake. So uh, you need to read the website in terms of what they require you to study or learn about when it comes to the interview because that's where what I didn't do properly there was one station where NHS values and you were supposed to talk about um you know the values of the NHS in terms of how a doctor should act um how you should be with your patients uh, how you should be with your colleagues things like that and they're not generic things like just teamwork or communication they're not generic things like that they're very very specific so you should definitely study that but the good thing about MMIs are if you do mess up one interview you've got all the other ones to try and redeem yourself um, now, one thing that Leicester did have specifically in, t in a station that I never did for any other interview was um, I had to actually pre-prepare a work, a piece of work um, for one of the stations. And that was like a poster that I had to create. I had to put some um, creativity into it as well. Um, I had to talk about my interests, um, things like doing, my academic profile. Um, I had to talk about um, work experience just anything about me things that speak of me and in that interview you have to talk about maybe your one two three most important points on there so it's important you choose carefully in that question um what what is like the most important thing to you on that piece of paper because you've got about 10 minutes to speak but it's not as long as you think um but yeah they just also want to see that you you've, you've got things that you're doing in your spare time you know whole life isn't just medicine 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 like you've got to have something to take your mind off um, all the work that you're going to be bombarded with when it comes to medical school and when you're a doctor. Acting, they have about three stations, like I said before. It's because Leicester's very big. I'm sure a lot of other medical schools are too, but um, even just from the lectures I've had, things like that, they're really, really big on how you are in dealing with people, not as patients, but people as people. They want to see your empathy skills. Uh, they want to see how good you are when it comes to dealing with people of really diverse backgrounds as well. They're really big on diversity. Um, and so I had three different stations. One where I was acting like a doctor, one I had to just be a normal person, and uh, another one, again, another normal person. But yeah, you could, in those accommodations, you could be bombarded with the most craziest of situations. You just have to know how to deal with it because you might be tempted to do one thing, which is maybe ignore someone who's talking about a very crazy thing in their life that's happened that is really good by the way um but you've just got to be the nicest person you can basically um be very communicative and be very problem solving as well and they do have a math station and yeah so make sure you read the website if you want to know specifically what you need to prepare what you need to study because if you don't do that you'll definitely have a hard time in the interview because they do expect you to prepare something and now uh, another thing is they score each station on an iPad, they give a score in each one and at the end they do add up your score and that determines if they give you an offer or not. One thing that's important to know about Leicester, this is in your personal statement and also in your interviews, definitely know about the medical school and you have to do this for all medical schools but Leicester I think they're much more specific and particular about it because their course has a bit more um, specificity to it because it's slightly more different. Now, most medical schools are either problem-based learning or case-based learning, whereas Leicester's not. They actually, they do an integrated course and that's what they call it. It's, I think it's really important to know that because it shows that you know about the specific differences in their course. You know why you're applying there and you have a reason to want to go there. So talk about their integrated course. Talk about why you prefer that. Talk about why that's better. Um, Something else as well, they split their five years up into phase one and phase two, that's what they call them. Phase one is year one and year two, and phase two is year threes, four and five. They're also very big on clinical experience very, very early on. And one thing they do, and I think this is a really good thing to mention, is in phase one and phase two, uh, you actually complete something known as a healthcare certificate. It's healthcare certificate training. Um, no, actually, that's only in year one, actually, not year two, but yeah, year one. Now, this is where you get your early clinical experience. Um, you learn cl like clinical skills, you learn how to communicate with patients. Um, it's almost like a healthcare worker type of 
um, certification that you're gaining and you can actually use that to get work if you wanted to as well like part-time work even though they don't really recommend you doing too much but you know that's something you can do if you want to uh, but that's a really important thing to mention as well because um, I don't think a lot of medical schools do that either they're also very 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 tech savvy they're a very tech savvy medical school and they kind of pride themselves on that uh, they're George Davies Medical Centre. It's a very new medical centre. They've got uh, a lot of new technology in there. They were actually the first medical school to give all their first year students iPads and they give the newest one that they can get their hands on and they give everybody one and you don't have to pay a penny for it. Um, and they did that because they recognise how much technology shapes our lives these days. They recognise how much this generation relies on technology and they're actually using technology uh, to give us a more, um, what's the word, um, a pathway into learning that is just much more integrated into our daily lives, uh, the way that we do things today. Um, all your work is sent there, you, you bring it to your group work, you bring it to your lectures, um, you can talk about that, how they're very, very uh, technology focused, how they understand this generation. Um, but yeah, that's a really good point to talk about as well. Um, yeah, I would say definitely, definitely research uh, the university as well. They do have a station talking about that because they do say why med why Leicester Medical School specifically. But yeah, all in all, I think um, you need to know about the scoring system that they use in terms of giving you the interviews. Uh, look at their website. They will talk about what they will ask you about in the MMI stations uh, because you probably might have to prepare something in advance. Uh, I really hope this video was of use to you guys or at least somebody um, in terms of getting into less medical school specifically. Uh, but yeah, thank you.